Um, so my opponents noted that first the Buffett rule would be like a trickle down effect so that the money from the rich would trickle down into the rest of the population. Um, also that the Buffett rule would prevent the wealthy from investing in to other businesses. And lastly, that the wealthy would avoid um, paying, these, paying these taxes by doing things like fleeing the country. Okay, so first, referring to the trickle-down effect and the fact that the, gov the government doesn't spend the money right, and so people are questioning, questioning whether the money will go to the right place. Um, well, many members of Congress, as well as a presidential candidate, are millionaires themselves. Um, according to Mother Jones, um, the average person has a 1 in 22 chance of being a millionaire. A member of Congress has nearly a 1 in 2 chance of becoming a millionaire. So just by these, like, this fact alone, that the, the um, many people in Congress would have to pay this minimum tax also, and so they would ensure that the money being um, produced from this program would be going to the right places because it's in fact their own money. Um, also, according to Michael McAuliffe from the Huffington Post, um, the Buffett Rule aims to prevent the extremely rich from paying around 15% income taxes, as many do, including likely GOP presidential nominee Mitt Romney. It would cut the deficit by $47 billion over 10 years. So like we said already, that it is a step in the right direction, um, and so this would help um, the, help decrease the deficit in some manner. Okay, so my opponent also suggested that if we tax the wealthy, that they'll be less likely to invest. But according to Nick Connor, an American entrepreneur and venture capitalist, he says, but sometimes the ideas that we are certain are true are dead wrong. Consider that for thousands of years, humans believed that Earth was the center of the universe. It's not. And an astronomer who still believed that it was would do some pretty terrible astronomy. Likewise, a policymaker who believes that the rich are job creators and therefore should be taxed will do equally terrible policy. So the fact that the rich invest in their companies and then create jobs, that information is totally inadequate because, like we said before, it's the consumers who create the jobs by the demand of supplies. Um, also, according to Nathan Pippinger, um, a reporter researcher of the New Republic, he says, the Congressional Research Service says there's little to worry about. Research suggests that these reforms are unlikely to affect many small businesses. So it, the buffer rule actually won't affect um, the wealthy from investing into businesses all that much. My opponent also mentions that people could flee the country to avoid paying taxes. However, that's kind of not that realistic because people have their whole lives here. They have their families. They're not likely to just get up and leave. Um, um, also, uh, our opponents suggest that an alternative would be better than the Buffett rule. However, any alternative, according to Jonathan Wiseman from the New York Times, would cost the Treasury almost exactly what the Democrats' tax increase would raise. So um, an alternative actually wouldn't be any less pricey. And so also, the sorry, this is my last point. Um, our opponents mentioned that the wealthy are paying 70% of the tax. However, the White House released tax data showing that the average federal tax rate of the wealthiest 0.1% of Americans has fallen from 51% to 26% over the last 50 years, which is like the time period when our economy started to fall. So that just shows that if all of it was raised back up to where it would be and they were paying that 51% tax rate, that our economy would be better off.